One religion is exceptional, and that is Islam. Yes, no religion other than Islam can give answers. When you search for the fastest growing religion on the internet, you come across Islam. Research that has been made in recent, cannot really imagine. So what is it that impresses so many people? What do they see that some of them become Muslims? We have determined guys you're welcome back my name is Bakumi. hope you guys are feeling good so we're going to be checking out unstoppable spread of islam here is why millions of people keep converting let's check it out when you search for the fastest growing religion on the internet you come across islam research that has been made in recent years has interestingly shown that result we are talking about a community with a population of almost two billion a quarter of the world's population mm -hmm. It's a much larger number than even the most populated country, China. On the one hand, it's the religion that is tried to be denigrated the most by the media. Muslims are people. Islam is yeah. an idea. Yeah. Islam is an idea. But a bad idea. And on the other hand, it's the religion that people convert to the most. Isn't it strange? We have an interesting picture before us. People telling the story of how they became Muslims in every corner of mm -hmm. the internet. Celebrities who declare that they have become Muslims day by day. For example, Andrew Tate has been mentioned a lot recently. Islam is beautiful, and I felt differently inside since I've converted, and I think it has the solutions to a lot of the problems we're facing in the world today. Former Dutch politician Joram van Klaveren. I decided to write an anti-Islam book, which started as an anti-Islam book, changed into this search for God, and it ended up me becoming a Muslim. <laughs> Former rock star Cat Stevens, now known as Yusuf Islam. Because when I started reading the Quran, one of the things that just I woke up to was the Quran is full of directives to make you think. Mm -hmm. Every year, we see an increase in the population of Muslims by thousands in non Muslim countries. It's not even possible to predict what will happen 50 years from now. One cannot really imagine. So, what is it that impresses so many people? What do they see that some of them become Muslims when they are so antagonistic as to be enemies of Islam? Mm -hmm. We have determined four important factors that affect people's decision of becoming Muslims. So what are they? Let's have a look at them together. Factor one. We have said above that Islam is the religion that is tried to be denigrated, undermined the most by the media. Despite all the defamation, the main reason for the new Muslims to convert to Islam is this. Those people managed to take the Quran and the Prophet ﷺ as references, not the media or the Muslims whose actions are not in line with Islam. They directly examined the life of the first student of the Quran and the person who practiced its decrees in the best way, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. The person they see is a person who gained the trust of even his enemies. He had been with them since he was born and was known for his trustworthiness, his high moral values above everyone else. Not once was he found to have lied. He was known as al Amin, meaning the trustworthy. This name was given to him before prophethood by the very people who will later become enemies of Islam. <sighs> But when he became a prophet, a much worse form of Islamophobia than today began to appear. Both Prophet Muhammad and those who believed in him were persecuted and subjected to all kinds of insults. But Islam had a tremendous influence. Despite all the persecution and efforts of deterrence, the number of people that were becoming Muslims did not decrease. On the contrary, it increased. As those who read his life know, they resorted to everything to dissuade him, to make him give up preaching this religion. They once offered him to make him the wealthiest person and the leader of the Meccan society and marry the most beautiful women if he gave up his cause. He refused them by giving the following answer, which went down in history. If they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I would not give up this religion and preaching it. Either Allah will make this religion dominant or I will sacrifice my life for this cause. Mm. He did not have any financial gain in this mission. On the contrary, he spent all his assets on his cause and he lived the rest of his life in poverty. Mm. They sometimes try to put nicknames such as liar, magician, imposter and self-seeker for him so that people wouldn't believe him, but it didn't work because the attitudes and actions of the Prophet and everything in his life were obvious. He couldn't have been such a person. In the first years, a three-year boycott was applied to him and the believers. When no one was allowed to sell them food, he lost his beloved ones and relatives. When he went to invite people in the region called Taif to Islam, he was stoned all the way and was drenched in blood. Other times, he even tied a stone over his stomach because of hunger. He experienced unparalleled hardships in his 23 years of prophetic life. When he went to conquer Mecca, where he had been persecuted, years later, he was humble enough to bow his head and be merciful enough to forgive those who had wronged him. Those who believe in him think like this when they read his life. A person who lived such a life cannot be a liar in his cause. And if this person is a liar, there cannot be any truthful person in the world.
They accept his prophethood by thinking like that. The more they learn about his life, the more they admire him. Factor two, if someone is to accept an idea, what does he do first? He asks questions, right? If he finds it logical, he accepts the idea. It holds true for religion as well. People want answers to questions about faith, but there are some issues that are incomplete in all religions that cannot be explained and that are not found reasonable. There's a general acceptance like this. Religion is an issue related to the heart. It's not an issue of logic. Believe it and move on. Don't question it. But one religion is exceptional, and that is Islam. Yes, no religion other than Islam can give answers this clearly to the questions to be asked. The witness of this is the volumes of books written throughout the 1400 years of Islamic history and answering the questions that have been asked. The Risale Nur Tafsirs written in the last century are one of the best examples of it with the determinations based on intellect and heart. While no other religion is based on evidence, Islam is proven with dozens of evidence. Even if you simply type on YouTube or Google, you can easily read some of them. Many verses of the Quran and Hadith always encourage people to use logic and learn knowledge, science. Mm -hmm. In order to understand that Islam is the most logical religion, it's enough to look at the most fundamental issue in the belief system, the belief in Allah. Islam is the religion with the clearest explanation about the Creator. While no other belief system mentions the characteristics of the Creator in a complete way, in Islam he is mentioned with his attributes along with his works of creation in the universe. And he is introduced in detail. How can a religion be expected to be true if it cannot give clear information about the Creator or if it's okay with using a term such as unknown energy? Even if you use that as the only criterion, only a few religions remain. And logical fallacies and logical errors can be seen in the explanations of all of them except Islam. Islam gives us the definition of a deity with infinite power and no weakness. In other words, Islam, unlike other religions, does not make a mistake in belief in Allah. It always makes the most correct definition. Then we say, I wonder if this religion is the religion sent by Allah. In other words, can the entity who introduces himself in the Quran be the creator of the universe? Factor 3. The other important reason is that 1400 years ago, Islam brought definite solutions to the problems that are still not solved today. We will give three basic examples. For example, there are serious problems with unity and brotherhood among people. Even when we look at the last century, we see the issue of racism, which caused the death of millions of people. Those deaths continue even today. The murders, oppressions, and persecutions of many racist groups, such as the Ku Klux Klan, are seen in the historical records. Sometimes those racist acts were made directly by the state, such as the Nazi-era Germany and China. No need to go far. We can look at this picture. It was taken in Brussels in 1958. If you write human zoo on the internet, you will see similar photos. They keep African black people in cages mm. and show them to people as if they are animals. Look at these people. Do they look like they are having a lot of fun? Isn't what they do to this kid humiliating enough? It's not just about Brussels. There were human zoos beginning from the 1900s until that time in the countries such as the USA, France and Germany. But they are developed and civilized countries. They wouldn't do such things, right? Let's see how Islam, which they call backward, looks at the issue. O oh, mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. It is stated in the Quran that so many different races were created so that they will get to know one another, not oppress one another. He who calls people to racism is not from us. He who fights for racism is not from us. He who dies because of racism is not from us. We are talking about a religion that says so. It is a religion that does not favor any race over the other, while the same mistake has been observed all over the world throughout history. Every year, during the pilgrimage season, Hajj season, people from all races, colors, and languages wear the same clothes and worship side by side without any sign of superiority or wealth. Islam shows the vision from 1400 years ago that today's civilization still doesn't have. One of the other biggest issues that Islam has brought a solution to is hunger and poverty. It brings the solution and at the same time mandates people to do it. It builds a bridge between rich and the poor and calls it zakat, alms. Islam has introduced a certain limit for being considered rich. A person who has wealth above that limit gives away 1 2.5% of his wealth to the poor, no matter how much wealth he has. 
On the one hand, the needs of the poor are met, and on the other hand, the bonds of brotherhood are strengthened. The rich cannot look down on or stay away from the poor, and the poor don't envy or hold a grudge against the rich. On the contrary, they get closer, both solving the financial problem and ensuring brotherhood. Moreover, there are many important examples of it in history. During the period of the Anatolian Seljuk state, Seljuk Sultanate of Rum, the Zakat ships had to be sent to Africa because there were no people poor enough to receive Zakat in the entire Anatolia. Yes, to Africa, which has been colonized by the enemies of Islam. In some other countries where Islam was really practiced, the rich had difficulty in finding people to give zakat after a while because the financial gap between them was closed with zakat and charity. The person who received zakat was later coming to the level of giving zakat. Modern culture, on the other hand, cannot bring a good solution to this extent. On the contrary, it creates a huge gap that makes the poor poorer and the rich richer with the interest system. The interest system, the riba system, says to people, you will work and I will earn money from your labor by doing nothing. I will make you go through hardships. While there are countless lives being destroyed by interest for years, Islam solves this problem by prohibiting riba 1400 years ago. We can give more examples like that. It's one of the things that makes Islam different and unique. What other religion is so involved in life? There is no issue Islam doesn't touch. It touches hearts as well as minds. It touches the family as well as the society. In fact, factor 4 is exactly this. It doesn't stay within the walls of the places of worship. It is not just a religion that is lived in the heart. It addresses the whole world and all areas of life. It's another fundamental point that attracts the attention of Muslim converts. We see lessons and recommendations on dozens of different issues in the Quran and the Prophet's own words, that is, in the hadiths. Besides, they are not simple recommendations that become obsolete, old-fashioned over time. They are all recommendations that preserve their freshness used and needed for 1400 years. The Prophet ﷺ did not only say them, he also showed examples of them by practicing them. In what fields does he give lessons? Shall we have a look at some examples? Other than the issues of worship, all legal issues with enough details to run a state, learning knowledge, science and reasoning, trade and commerce, economy, state administration and diplomacy, communication with people, hospitality, being a good neighbor, friendship, taking care of relatives, marriage and family affairs, raising children, protecting and taking care of the orphans, helping the poor and needy, taking care of patients and patients' own motivation, sports, all the problems caused by the tongue, leadership and teamwork, cleaning in every detail, spiritual upbringing and maturity, history, at the same time, the news given about the future that turn out to be true. We can list other areas as well. Do you know what the other interesting thing is? The period we are talking about is the 600s and the people that are doing these is only one person. And that one person is someone who didn't even learn to read and write as his friends and enemies witness. While one person can be a model for people in only a few areas, it is something unparalleled that an unlettered person can be a model in so many areas and address every era, every period. That's why the famous historian and astrophysicist Michael Hart, who wrote The Hundred, a ranking of the most influential persons in history, put the Prophet Muhammad in the first place in his book. Explaining the reason for it, he states the following. My choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others but he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular level. This is the thing that those who become Muslims while reading about his life notice. What they see is a religion that touches every aspect of life, not just a religion that is lived in the heart and in the place of worship, and it has shown its universality by preserving its freshness for 1400 years. Among the ones who could notice it is the former politician Joram Van Klaveren, whom we interviewed. He wanted to write an anti-Islam book because he knew Islam as it was portrayed by the media. As he researched Islam, he started to realize the facts like the four basic items that we talked about. As a result, the journey that started with an anti-Islam purpose ended in becoming a Muslim. That is the brief answer to the question why people become Muslims. As people continue to research, read the life of the Prophet and notice what he brought to people, the number of converts to Islam will increase even more. As a great Islamic scholar said, be hopeful, among the revolutions of the future, the loudest sound will be the sound of Islam. Wow!
very interesting fact. I'm glad that this man was able to prove the reason why people keep converting. You know, each of these facts, like, it has really opened my mind to know more about Islam and let me understand how things are done in Islam. You know, when it comes to the part where people believe that, okay, Islam is full of oppression, it's full of terrorism, but it's not so. And amazing, amazing. Now, I just kind of understand everything, the logic behind the whole reasons why people keep searching for the truth, people keep reading the Quran, and why people think, yes, that's the only true religion that is the, you know the right way for them and mind-blowing thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share and comment i'll see you in the next one bye